Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Cole. Today, we're going to take old VHS tapes and turn them into pen books. Now what I did, you can do this also, is I was at a resale shop and I bought this, what I would say is terribly ugly purse, but the strap on it was not that bad. In fact, I kind of think the strap's pretty cool, but um, it's not long enough for my wife, uh, but it is long enough for my little girl. So what I would do is take this and I measured it as to how long I needed it off of this purse. So I had this on um, Tammy and we measured it and it needed to be the width of this chain plus for me, for her, it needed to be on each side four fingers extra. We go by a real uh, firm measurements here. And so four closed fingers extra, and then I added about an inch, which is right there. And so then I take this, and I cut it just like that. It's real easy to cut with a uh, pair of pliers. So once that's cut, just don't lose your little metal shards, otherwise they're going to end up in somebody's foot. And so if you want to yeah. yeah, tie that back in. We'll set these over to the edge over here. And so once you have that, obviously we're going to get rid of this. But take, for instance, this purse right here. I think I paid $2 for the whole thing. And to buy the metal would cost you more than that. So if you find one of these, you just like the hardware on it, buy it. Take the hardware off and use it. Uh, it could save you some money. Uh, that's what we're going to do with that for Allison, as a matter of fact. But if you don't like the hardware, you can buy this little roll of chain and we've made, uh, this will be our third strap out of this roll of chain and it was $11.99 less 40% at Hobby Lobby with the coupon and I think we have enough on here to do at least one more uh, roll because I think this comes with 18 feet, yeah, 6 yards, 18 feet and so that will cover at least 4 chains so that puts me down to like I don't know, about $2 a chain. So pretty close to what the other one was uh, that was on that other purse. Now, a uh, couple things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose which one of these uh, chain uh, connectors you're going to want to use. Well, since we're doing uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, we're not going to use hearts. We're going to use the swivel clasp. So I cut that open. I'm going to get two of those out. I'm going to put the other one in here and I'm going to get two jump rings out. That's what these are called, they're jump rings, these little round rings. Now, like I say, I bought heavier duty jump rings on purpose. Uh, but now we're done with that and I'm going to need this and my Leatherman. And so we're going to take these two and we're going to open our jump rings with them. And so how you do that, I don't know if you can see this very well. I'll clear the table, maybe you can get a better view. But you look on your jump ring and you'll find that there's a, there's a split in one spot where they made that complete circle. And so you put one pair of pliers with the needle nose pliers on one side of the jump ring and then the other pair of needle nose pliers on the other side of the jump ring. And so when you have those like that, then you're going to move those two away from each other about 45 degrees and what that does is that opens that jump ring up just like that I'll hold it out there so y'all can see it there just like that to where you've got a 45 degree curve and so that gives you plenty of room to take this 
set it on there and then take this end and set it on that hoop and then you can take your needle nose pliers put it back on your jump ring rotate it up put this one back on this side just like so and then you're going to rotate these back to where they're closed and when you're rotating them back to where they're closed you don't want to just stop right where they're closed because if you do metal likes to bend backwards it doesn't like to be bent so it, it has a little retention history to it so you're going to want to go just about the width of the metal further and it'll naturally slide right back into place you want to make that even because if you pull those apart you weaken your jump ring but we made it even there so that's good and now we'll do the other side the same way see how straight that is you can't even tell that I moved it and now I've got my chain completely finished and it didn't take just a few seconds and so that chain is done and ready for use now what we need to do is we need to sew this ribbon but before you sew it you have to measure it which I'm pretty uh, much like with measuring my chain I'll measure this so I'll set my let me cut a clean edge here. So we'll cut a clean edge on one end. Just like so. When you get it halfway straight, which that's not. When you get it halfway straight, like that. Then you take and you heat seal the end and that keeps it from coming apart real bad on you. Terrible with ribbon coal. Hmm. But this will never be seen, so it's not that big of a deal. So I heat seal the end, make sure it's not going to stick to my table. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to find this side and I'm going to cut about the same width overage like this. Get rid of my excess. I'm going to heat seal this in the same way. Now then that that's heat sealed, it won't fray on me. I'm going to take this and I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to put a pair of pliers here to hold that side down and a pair of scissors to hold this side down. I'm going to lay this in the middle and I'm going to find what I think is pretty close to the dead center. I'm going to open these um, D-rings. Now these were $2.49 at Hobby Lobby. If you plan this out for several weeks, you can get this stuff real cheap. Use a 40% off coupon with it. I think it was $1.50. And so, let's see. Not that much money in the end of it all. The ribbon was scrap here at the house. I'm going to put this on one side. Um, make sure that I'm folding inward to the top with my ribbon. I'm going to put this on the other and I'm going to try and find a centerpiece. Now the reason I fold it inward is I want them to be consistently about the same just so they look right because you're going to see the stitching. With this black not so much but with everything else you will. So I notice I want my D-ring to sit just outside the VHS because you don't want it to damage it. But I'm a little long, like about a quarter of an inch. What you're going to want to do is put a little tension on your ribbon. And the reason you're wanting a little bit of tension is you want what it's going to be like whenever you've got that chain attached and all the heavy pins in there. So once you figure that out like I just did here, I'm going to hold one finger there, I'm going to lift it. And then now then that I know exactly where I want that, I'm going to take one of these straight pins and I'm going to pin it because I don't want it getting off. Now if I didn't know how to sew or I didn't have a wife that knew how to sew, then I would probably at this point, after pinning these two, I would glue them. And we use a Gorilla um, hot glue, which 
holds better than most hot glues. But since my wife knows how to sew, I'm going to have her sew it because it gives it a lot more strength. So now then that that side is done, I'll pull this side out to get right where I want it with the tension. I'll put my finger there, I'll lift it up, and I will pin this side the same way, just pinning it. Right here. Like that. So now both my sides are pinned. When it gets sewn, it'll look just like that. You'll be able to close this and I'll have those rings right here on the outside like this. And so you'll be able to clip and it'll carry just like a little purse. Now, what we'll do is once we sew it, we'll actually hot glue this down to this strip in here to keep it exactly in place where we want it so it doesn't damage the case. But we're going to have Tammy come in and she's gonna sew it for you and she's gonna show you guys exactly how to sew that uh, to give it the most strength. Okay. Hi guys, okay so uh, I'm going to sew this and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew directly across right where the pin was just so that I lock my spot in place and I'm just going to sew a straight line across. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew a box straight across right through here and then I'm going to put an X in the center of it and that's all I'm going to do and that's going to give it a lot of strength and stability and I like to come down and sew my bottom piece straight across first uh, that way that it, it keeps my ribbon in place and it doesn't move so that my ribbon is evenly across And then once that's done, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, and then when you're finished, once all of your, um, you're done sewing your, your ribbon, uh, you just take off some, uh, just take some scissors and trim around the edges of the, where the thread has frayed. Okay, well thank you Tammy for helping us out with that. You know, I'm not a very good sewer. Uh, one thing to know, black on black sewing, it's real hard to see where you've sewn and where you haven't and what you're doing. So be, uh, be aware of that if you're going to do the sewing method. So we're reaching to the point where we're going to try and put our uh, pin purse together. <clears throat> and what, we'll, what you're going to want to do is take this uh, where she's sewn or you've hot glued and you're going to want to glue the part where it's uh, your excess was sewn down, you're going to want to glue that down. So we'll flip that over. And then what I like to do at this point is to take this uh, glue gun, and we're going to need this. And so I would uh, take and kind of do a uh, pattern. Yeah, like a chevron type pattern down through here with it to try and maximize my coverage without going off the thing and without going off this little middle bar there's a little middle section here that you can this thing doesn't want to catch I got it now and this little uh, bar in the middle is a great bar to make it attach but the one thing about glue and ribbon is it's really hot so what you're going to want to do is come straight down on it to where you know you're far enough apart that you don't have any problems and then you're going to want to press and it's kind of hot so be ready for hot whew, as you go down through there because it is very hot 
and press that down. Don't be afraid to make that middle section crush. That's why you wanted to make sure that you actually had one that was not going to crack out that was like dry rotted or something. So as I come down through here you can see I'm pressing pretty firmly to make sure and then I'm running it across all the way. I've flattened it out the best I possibly can. So what that'll do is allow me to have my stuff shut and hold and it be as thin as possible. Because ultimately you're going to want it to be able to shut just like that. You're going to want this to be out there just like this so that you can attach your purse, straps. You could just call it a pin bag strap just like so and so there is your pin bag purse all built you can stop before the, the straps and all the extra if you're uh, like me and you want to have one but you just want it to be in your backpack but right there is your purse all made up you want to model it for everybody what okay uh, so let's take a look. I'll push a pin in and you guys can see just how it works. So we've got a pin. If you register and we give this away and you're the winner, the pin does not come with it. But you push the pin in and there you go. As easy as that. Put it together, shut, and you're ready to go. Now I will give this, if it gets too many pins and they're too thick, what will happen is, is it won't want to shut if there's too many pins and it gets too thick. In other words, your pins are thick. So mainly for single width pins. If there are multiple layers on the pins, it's going to make it wider and it's not going to want to shut as easy. And so what you'll have to do in that case is not put pins on one side or not build to one side. But as long as you've just got standard pins, this works great. Um, like I say, about 30 or so pins. So what we'd like to know is uh, whether you guys, if, when you build these, if you like them, if you enjoyed it and it was easy enough to build, please like, uh, uh, tell us that in the comments. Um, like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. And if you want to either see the, uh, what's it called, the PF? The PDF? Yeah. Yeah, if you want the PDF, um, of the drawings for the inside so you can make your own stencils or if you just want to do the um, or if you want to enter into the contest go to www.managingmickey.com that's right and find the contest page and you'll be able to find the email to email us so we can enter your name uh, in the contest until next time from our house to yours